James chapter 5. What we have happening in the book of James is we have James, the brother of Jesus, writing to a church um, who's largely Jewish um, and, and is very, um, I should say, Jewish Christian, Jewish background is what I mean. Um, and, and, and they're being persecuted by these, by these basically, um, the rich people. Uh, we don't really have the same thing nowadays, but um, there would be these rich people who would own tracts of land, and they would hire out these, these day laborers, um, and, and they would work very long shifts. Um, and what they were doing was they weren't paying these people, and so they were taking out their frustration on each other, um, maybe thinking about coming against the... Um, um, the, the, the rich people themselves, just really in a place of frustration. Um, and so in James chapter 5, we pick up, and this is what he says. Uh, starting in verse 7. Therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious produce of the soil, being patient about it until it gets the early and late rains. You too be patient, strengthening your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. Do not complain, brethren, against one another, so that you yourselves may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing right at the door. And then in, down in verse 13 it says, As anyone among you suffering, then he must pray. So there's a few things that um, I kind of want to point out with this um, passage here. The, the first is found there in verse 7. He says, therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. So the first point here is patience. When you're, str when you're faced with, with, with times of suffering, times of persecution, when people aren't treating you fair, when people aren't giving you what you deserve, when people are withholding even money from you, when people are withholding the blessings from you, when people are opposing you, when you are completely in the right and, and, and still they're against you, even if you did absolutely nothing wrong, what does he tell you to do? Be patient. Be patient. And how long does he tell you to be patient for? Till the end. Be patient until the end. See what I mean? Sometimes we get patient until we've had enough. We get patient until the person just irritated us so hard that we just don't even care anymore. But that's not what James says. He says, be patient until the end. Be patient until the coming of the Lord. In other words, let God do what he's going to do, but I called you to be patient. Um, and obviously he's talking to people who were day laborers, so they would be very acquainted with, the, with, with how um, the, far, the farmer waits for his land. The farmer waits for the precious produce of the soil, being patient about it until it gets the early and late rains. See, that, that's something that they would know as day laborers, being patient about this. So be patient while God works in others and in the situation. See what it says there? Farmer waits for the precious produce of the soil, being patient about it until it gets the early and late rains. Let's put this in the context of a person. Sometimes we are, we're patient with someone until we think that the, the harvest time is over, buddy. We're not being patient anymore. But be patient for the early and the late rains. Be patient until the end. The same as a farmer goes out there day by day and is patient with, with, the, with the soil. You face the people day in day, and day out and be patient with them. See what he's saying there? The farmer goes out and is patient for soil. You be patient for people. But they wronged me, but they irritate me, but they're, they're just no good. The situation, I'm just so tired of it. Be patient for the early and the late rains. Be patient until the coming of the Lord. And then verse 8 he says, you too be patient. Strengthen your hearts for the coming of the Lord is near. Do not complain, brethren, against one another, so that you yourselves may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing right at the door. So basically what he's saying is that when we talk about someone else, when we talk um, or think in, in the context of James, if you read the rest of the book, when we um, harbor resentment against someone else, God doesn't hear our prayers. Sorry, God doesn't hear our prayers and he will, yes, God? Um, God doesn't hear our prayers, and I lost my train of thought here. Um, um, and we, too, fall into condemnation. Not only does God not hear our prayers, 
See what I mean? He, d- he stops listening to our prayers when we live in sin. Okay? But then also, we are judged the same as the person who wronged us was judged. But I didn't do anything wrong. But your heart was wrong, and so you fell to condemnation. See that? We're patient until the end. We leave no room for bitterness. Even if we were 100% right, be patient and do not give bitterness a foothold. So that brings us to the second point, without talking about others. What do we do when we get frustrated? We go and tell our, if we're girls, we go and tell our girlfriends about everybody who wronged us. If we're, if we're guys, you know, we go and tell the guys about all these bad things that have, if, or maybe we go and tell our wife, you know, well, they, they mistreated me and they this and they that without talking about one another. See what I mean? What is the natural response to irritation? You take it out on someone else, right? You have a long day at work, you come home, you take it out on the kids. Why? Because we're, we're guys, we're short-tempered. See what I mean? It's the natural result of facing, te- of facing with struggles. But what he tells us to to do throughout the rest of the letter, too, is just basically I'll, I'll summate what he says. If you can't say anything good, just don't say anything at all. Um, and that takes us to the third point there. Um, when you're going through suffering, do it with prayer. You know, oftentimes we don't see the value of prayer. But for James, that's the ultimate climax of dealing with the problem is prayer. Takes us to verse 13. Is anyone among you suffering? Then he must pray. And the next, next verse, he says, I, I, what about if you're, if you're sick? Or, or the, the actual word is weak. So it could be a physical or a spiritual ailment. We really don't know. Um, but let's just assume that it's a physical ailment. If you're sick, what do you do? Pray. See what I mean? His solution for these things is prayer. Rather than, rather than rising up against the powers, rather than being embittered against the powers, rather than, rather than taking what's owed you, pray. So, let me kind of summate what we talked about here. When you're going through suffering, be patient. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about yesterday. Today, be patient. What we do is, you know, we, we start thinking about the future, and oh, I, I can't be patient that long. Or we think about the past. Well, I've been patient with them. I've been patient about this. Worry about today. Be patient today. And in that patience, make sure not to become embittered against others especially when they wrong you. And third off, stay in prayer. 